was the last time you really felt the country was on the right track? It's probably been a while. Our politicians are not being straight with us. Each party offers painless solutions that protect special interests and reward millionaire lobbyists. At a time when America is going to choose our next president, let's begin a serious discussion about how best to proceed as a nation. And that is a portion of the internet ad that former IRS Commissioner Mark Everson used to announce his 2016 presidential run. Mark Everson joins us right now. Uh, as the former IRS Commissioner, Mark, you got to admit, a lot of people have problems when they hear the letters IRS. That, that kind of makes it uphill to begin with, does it not? Uh, J.D., thanks for having me. You're, no, you're exactly right. Look, um, nobody would say that uh, the IRS commissionership is a traditional launching path for the presidency, but I'm doing this because I'm concerned about our country. I, I want to get us back to constitutional governance. I want to tackle issues like the uh, lawlessness of the big banks and, and, and achieve fundamental tax reform. You served on Ways and Means. You know how hard that's going to be to, to get done, and who better to do it than somebody who ran the IRS? That's the way I see it. Well, let's talk about that. The letter you uh, have uh, written to America outlined six initiatives, and you've got fundamental mm -hmm. tax reform number one. Tell us what kind of reform you're talking about in terms of taxes. Well, I think we need to move to a consumption tax. If we do that, that'll take 150 million Americans off the income tax rolls. They won't have to file a tax return. It'll provide for continued growth of our economy. Most ec economists think this will really help, but it will retain the progressivity, which we should have, J.D., in the tax code. Those of us who have made more or make more, I think, should uh, pay relatively more. So what you do is you get... Uh, the consumption tax in, you take most Americans uh, off the income tax rolls, but you leave the income tax in for the high end. But you can bring down the rates if you do this, both on the income tax and actually in the corporate tax too, and make our businesses more competitive overseas. Now it's interesting, Mark, because what you're mentioning is a combination of what we have now, tax returns for uh, wealthy Americans ostensibly, but also this new kind of consumption tax for everybody else. Why not just one? Why not a consumption tax for everybody? Uh, J.D., I, it won't be progressive if you do that. And I think that, uh, the, go back to where the income tax started. It started a century ago, and it was only for the, the high-end earners. I think that progressivity has served us well as a nation. The concept that if you have more, you pay relatively more. The proposal that I'm putting forward, will it won't redistribute the wealth. It will keep the, uh, the contributions, if you will, of the high end and the middle where they are now. Uh, and uh, so I think that's workable. I think everybody can get their arms around it. But think of all the uh, millions of Americans this time of year who are scratching their heads and trying to figure out how to do their taxes. Uh, this will relieve them of that, of that burden of dealing with the IRS. So, so, and frankly, J.D., you served on the Ways and Means. We worked together. Uh, do you think that this uh, 1986 approach where you try to pare back provisions is going to work? That's going to be a horrible food fight. I just think it'll be too tough to get that done. Well, Mark, what I believe for the record is a, a consumption tax, tax reform, but tax reform across the board. My fear is when you leave some element of what, what, what is in there from days past, when the other side mm -hmm. gets in control, they just go back and raise taxes. But uh, you're here to answer questions, and I want to want to have a few more for okay. you in the four minutes we have left. Okay. Item number five sure. on your six-plank letter reads as follows. Reinforcing the American tradition of assimilation through comprehensive immigration reform. Uh, we're not having assimilation now with the newest Americans who are, and that's being way too mm -hmm. diplomatic to people who are coming here illegally. Do you really think comprehensive immigration reform, aka amnesty, is the path to go? I think that uh, concept of assimilation has been lost, and that's what we need to get back to, uh, lest we end up with the incoherence, the chaos, and the and the grave division over how to deal with things like radical Islam that you see in Europe, J.D. So, yes, I would secure the borders. I would put in the E-Verify so that we make sure that we um, have uh, the hiring not only take place for those who are authorized to work, and I would provide the amnesty. Those 11 million people aren't going anywhere. I would let them have citizenship, except for the criminals, the ones who haven't paid 
pay their taxes because I want them all in in America. We need everybody pulling in the same direction here. Have everybody learn English? Absolutely. But we need people who are full participants in our society. That's, that's, that's what we need to get back to. So, Mark, you give us some straight talk. You say, no beating around the bush, you are a pro-amnesty Republican. Being very candid about it, here's Absolutely. my concern. We, we don't mm -hmm. secure the border, and people continue to come. Being pro-amnesty, doesn't that say to people who came here lawfully, you guys were suckers. We let these guys break the law and come on in. Yeah, amnesty is always a difficult concept in that regard, you know, people say we should have it in the tax code too, but I think if we strengthen the control over the borders, and again, you control that, you reduce that magnet of employment by checking the credentials of everybody who's seeking a job, I think you can choke off that future illegal immigration, and then you can get the country all pulling together through that renewal of the, of the tradition of assimilation. What I talk about, J.D., throughout my letter to America that you reference is we've got to build back our sense of community. It used to be that we had, uh, you know, one town. You had some people lived on one side of the tracks, some lived on the other side of the tracks, and it was still one community. We've lost that, and part of it is about the big banks and the way they operate to, the, to their own interests. Uh, there are a whole series of issues shared sacrifice in terms of national service, but we've got to do everything we can to get us back as one nation. And not only being one nation, but in the one minute that remains, you say you're going to serve one term if elected. Why? Mm -hmm. I just think there's way too much politics in this. I, if, if I'm elected, I will govern with a traditional deference to the Congress. I respect the limited powers of the presidency. My record both at the INS and the IRS was to execute the law as written. I can tell you though, from having served JD in two very different administrations, that what happens is by year three, everybody up and down the line is thinking about the reelect, and that's wrong. They should be thinking about the country first and not the self-interest of reelection politics. And Mark it's Everson, if voters want to find out more about you, what's, uh, what's your website? Markforamerica.com, JD. Fair enough. Mark, we may not agree on everything, like amnesty, but I'm very pleased you could take the time to join us, as you do today from Newsmax, New York. Maybe you can go set those big banks on Wall Street straight during the visit. Admittedly, it's an uphill climb, but anyone who is willing to run for public office deserves our respect. And Mark Everson, you have it, as well as our thanks. America's Forum will continue from Newsmax TV right after this news update.